Happy Sat Stack and Saturday. Welcome to the number one daily Bitcoin pod. In today's show, we have a lot to cover. I'm going to be breaking down the latest Bitcoin technical analysis, as well as breaking news. 84% of all the Bitcoin supply has not been moved in over six months. Let's freaking go. Also, Bitcoin hash rate explodes higher to 545 quintillion exahashes per second. A new record, quoting the high priest of Bitcoin, the hash adjusted implied price for Bitcoin is now in the mid $300,000. Send it. Let's freaking go. Also, breaking news. Alex Jones lost 10,000 Bitcoin in a stash gifted by the high priest, Max Kaiser. But Max Kaiser says he can regain it by doing a quiz. That sounds pretty damn good, wouldn't you say? Also in today's show, Wall Street Journal corrects their article misciting Hamas crypto terrorism funding data, which we all know is nothing more than Bitcoin FUD. Also breaking news, crypto rug pulls leave hundreds of Central African Republic investors penniless. That's right. There is a reason why El Salvador is the standard for nation state Bitcoin adoption. You can say that again. Also in today's show, the SEC is considering eight to 10 spot Bitcoin ETF applications. According to their chairman, Gary Gensler, I'll be breaking down the latest updates with when these approvals are likely. We're also going to be discussing the latest from Michael Saylor. He says, prepare for a Bitcoin price tsunami. I'll be breaking down his $10 million Bitcoin price prediction. We'll also be taking a look at the overall crypto market. All this plus so much more in today's show. Welcome, y'all. This is podcast episode number 1444. I'm your host, JV. Today is October 28th, 2023. Naturally, lots to cover, lots going on. The Bitcoin market is pumping right now. So let's kick it off with our market watch as we do each and every day. You should be able to see here on your screen, Bitcoin is up, trading above 34,300 with the rest of the crypto market also pumping and in the green. And checking out coinmarketcap.com. The crypto market cap sits at 1.26 trillion with 25 billion in volume in the past 24 hours with a Bitcoin dominance still on the climb at 53.1% and the Ether dominance on the decline at 17%. I wouldn't be surprised if this ETH dominance drops into the 16s here soon. Now checking out the top 100 crypto gainers of the past 24 hours. We got QTUM up 19% trading at $3.19. Below that we have Satoshi Vision up 8.5% trading at $49.49 followed by SUI up 8% trading just above $49. 46 cents. And checking out the top 100 crypto gainers of the past week, we have Tao leading the pack. Uh, 15% overall bullish. Most of them are in the green and pumping, a good indicator. Uh, and checking out the Crypto Greed and Fear Index, we're currently rated a 65 in greed. Yesterday was a 70, last week a 63, and last month a 46 in fear. So there you have it. Now, let me know how many of you are currently bullish on the King Crypto. I'll let your boy in that live chat. We're going to start with some Bitcoin TA and then we'll do a little uh, Ethereum TA. Bitcoin rose back above 34 level today, which comes following the recent price consolidation after hitting 33.4 on Friday. Bitcoin rallied to an intraday high of 34.2 to start the day. Let's go. The move saw the Bitcoin snap a two-day losing streak, which came after the crypto was significantly overbought, which you can see here in the Bitcoin daily chart. But despite the uncertainty of the past few days, the 14-day relative strength index, which we know is the RSI, remains in this territory. And at this time, the index is tracking 81, which comes as bulls are implemented an interim floor at the 80 mark. If this level holds throughout the weekend, the bulls may make yet another run towards that $35,000 level. So let me know if you think we're likely to retest and break above and potentially climb on up to 40,000. Holla at your boy. And checking out Ethereum, it rebounded from Friday's drop, making a run back towards the 1800 level to start the weekend. ETH slash USD peaked at just under 1800 on Saturday, which comes after the price fell to a low of 1750 less than 24 hours ago. Now, this climb means the world's second largest crypto has traded higher for nine of the last 10 sessions, which we can see here in the Ethereum daily chart, which suggests this latest rally comes as the 10-day moving average continues this uptrend versus the 25-day counterpart and represented in the chart. The 10-day is in the red and the 25-day is in the blue. Now, additionally, the RSI found the floor at 
68, using that as a springboard for the current reading of 69. The bulls will likely make further runs towards 1800, despite the overall price strength being overbought. Now, this just in, 84% of the Bitcoin supply has not been moved in over six months. Where are my long-term hodlers at? Make some noise and let that sink in because you have massive asset managers. We're talking about the behemoths out there that control trillions upon trillions in assets under management. They all need to get their hands on Bitcoin. But when you got 84% of hodlers with diamond hands unwilling to sell, that means supply shocks. So let's freaking go. And also the hash rate hits yet another all-time high of 545 quintillion exahashes per second. Let's freaking go. Max Kaiser responded to this news. God wants Bitcoin to win the fight against AI for global energy use. God is backing Bitcoin. The hash rate will continue flying higher as God continues compelling us to hash harder. God knows that only Bitcoin can fix the Middle East and Europe Asia ish show. The hash adjusted implied price for Bitcoin is now in the mid $300,000. And Max just also recently tweeted that $220,000 is in play and that God's perfect money was sent here from the future to make bad people look worse and good people great. Big volatility ahead. And yeah, I agree with him. Let me know your thoughts. I mean, it's always a good sign when the Bitcoin fundamentals continue to grow stronger. We know the Bitcoin price follows the hash. Now let's break down our uh, first story of the day, and that's Alex Jones actually getting gifted 10,000 Bitcoin by the high priest of Bitcoin, Max Kaiser. That's right. And he claims he lost it just like everyone, right? We lose Bitcoin in boat accidents all the time. But nonetheless, he claims he lost it on a laptop and Max Kaiser wanted to give him another opportunity to get 10,000 Bitcoin if he's willing to answer five questions from a quiz. So let's break this down. Now, how many of you would love to be gifted some Bitcoin? Let me know. Bitcoin enthusiast Max Kaiser took the social networks to allow InfoWars host Alex Jones to regain the 10,000 Bitcoin he claims he lost when Bitcoin was priced at only $5. So we're talking about a fortune, hundreds of millions of dollars worth in which he claims is lost. According to Alex, Max gave him a laptop containing the Bitcoin in a meeting, but Jones did not care for the item, which got lost in undisclosed circumstances. Jones disclosed this loss on a show two years ago when he revealed that it had indeed happened. At the time, here's what Alex shared. 10 years ago, Max Kaiser comes to me and says, I have 10,000 Bitcoins for you. This is the future. It'll be the new global currency. He is on record. Now, when he later revealed what happened, the show host called him a effing idiot and invited him to find the lost laptop. I deserve it, said uh, Jones after being slapped twice. Nonetheless, it seems that destiny might reunite Jones with 10,000 Bitcoin at this price level of today's value. It's worth approximately $340 million. That's more than a quarter of a billion. And as Kaiser recently posted on X. He shared the following. I'll be back on Alex Jones later this week and with a quiz. If he can answer all five questions correctly, he gets his 10,000 BTC. Now, Jones, who was ordered to pay one and a half billion due to claims about the Sandy Hook school shootings, declared bankruptcy after the 2022 verdict. A recent ruling determined Jones still needs to pay most of this amount despite filing for personal bankruptcy. The regained gift might help the embattled journalist to face his situation. And according to Max, Jones has not communicated with him to confirm his participation in the proposed quiz. Now, on October 25th, he declared the following, Alex hasn't confirmed a date or a time yet. Is he about to lose the chance to own 10,000 Bitcoin again? What's wrong with you, Alex? <laughs> Maybe he really has that 10,000 Bitcoin and he never lost it. I'd love to know your thoughts and speculation in the comments right down below. All right, guys, let's break down our next story of the day. And that is the latest Bitcoin FUD, which actually Wall Street uh, Journal published uh, misleading information, but you would expect nothing less from the mainstream media, right? The Wall Street Journal partially corrected the article, mischaracterized the extent in which Hamas and other militant groups have been funding its terrorist activities with cryptocurrencies. The October 10th article titled Hamas Militants Behind Israel Attack Raised Millions in Crypto cited blockchain forensics firm Elliptic and said that the Palestinian Islamic Jihad, a terrorist organization operating in the Gaza Strip, raised as much as $93 million between August of 2021 and June of 2023. In the cited report, Elliptic said Israel's counterterrorism unit seized the wallets, which
which received $93 million over that time frame. However, Elliptic clarified this did not mean that it was raised of these funds to finance terrorism activities. They're just speculating. Now, research from blockchain forensics firm uh, Chainalysis suggests only $450,000 of these funds were sent to the known terrorism affiliated wallet. The Wall Street Journal's correction stated that the Lebanese political party uh, may have exchanged up to $12 million in crypto, which is obviously far less than the initial $93 million figure. Now, um, the Palestinian Islamic Jihad may have, ex this is quoting them again uh, with the updated article, exchanged up to $12 million in crypto since 2021, according to the crypto research firm. An earlier version of the article incorrectly said they had pub or more than $12 million in crypto, which we all know is not uh, correct. Now, the Wall Street Journal's retraction follows an October 25th statement by Elliptic, which called the Wall Street Journal to correct this misinterpretation of the data. Elliptic added the crypto's funding by Hamas remains tiny relative to the other funding sources. October 27th, Elliptic was pleased to see the Wall Street Journal acknowledge its mistakes, but it said it would have liked to see it more specific about the corrections, quoting Elliptic here on X, we are pleased to see the Wall Street Journal issue some corrections to their article based on our feedback. While we would like to have seen them go further, we'll continue to engage constructively. Now, Coinbase's chief legal officer also noted the Wall Street Journal's opening paragraph is still framed as though crypto was the primary funding source behind the Hamas attack on Israel. Again, they're just perpetuating FUD, so we know it's not true. This is barely a correction, he added. And then also Nick Carter, partner of Castle Island Ventures, a well-known you know, uh, person in the space. He also said, calling on United States Senator Elizabeth Warren to retract the related uh, letter backed by over a 100 U.S. lawmakers written to the White House October 17th. The letter cited the Wall Street Journal's misinterpretation data from Elliptic in an attempt to argue that crypto poses a national security threat, in which it does not, to the U.S. and to the Congress and to the Biden administration, which they should act swiftly before the cryptos are used to finance another tragedy. I mean, again, we clearly know who the enemies of Bitcoin are. And Liz Warren, you're in that list clearly, as well as a lot of others, most of these people in power have sold their soul. And we know that Bitcoin is only a threat to the central banking cartels. Now let's break down our next story of the day and discuss a country that adopted Bitcoin as a legal tender. A lot of people were talking about it. They did it after El Salvador. However, they allowed ish coiners to destroy everything. They pulled the rug and now all these investors are left penniless, which is a great example of what can happen when ish coiners destroy a country. Crypto rug pull leaves hundreds of Central African Republic investors penniless. Here we go. Police of the Central African Republic suspect a rug pull after the operators of a crypto firm vanished overnight. The news outlet RFI reported the research and investigation of the National uh, Gender Me which is a part of the CAR police force, which have launched this investigation into the firm. Prosecutors also launched a separate investigation into the firm, whose operators, investors say, disappeared without a trace, taking their money with them. The company is named Clay du Success. I guess that translates the key to success. And per an earlier report, the nation's finance ministry confirmed their company registered with the authorities and was this year issued with a tax identification number. The firm reportedly gathered investments from hundreds of their residents. Disgruntled investors were photographed outside an apparently abandoned office October 11th. So just another rug pull in the crypto community taken a lot of investors with them. Now, the RFI noted the company is managed by Cameroonian and Nigerian entrepreneurs. The media outlet added that the firm promised its clients they could earn 20% gains on their investments. This rug pull occurred in the Central African Republic, hence why Bitcoin is the king. Don't fall for these scammers from a lot of these ish coiners. Now, the next breaking story of the day is the SEC considering eight to 10 spot Bitcoin ETF applications. According to their chairman, Gary Gensler, let's break this one down. Here we go. U.S. SEC chairman said Thursday the regulator has eight to 10 spot Bitcoin ETF apps under review. The SEC has not yet approved the spot Bitcoin ETF, even though the agency has green lighted several ETFs linked to Bitcoin future contracts. Regarding Bitcoin ETF decisions, here's quoting the chairman. They'll come 
come potentially to five member commission. I am not going to prejudge them, but I have nothing on timing. They'll have various different filing dates. Gensler did not specify the eight to 10 spot Bitcoin ETF apps the SEC is reviewing. However, based on public records, there are 12 spot Bitcoin ETF apps pending review at the SEC, including Grayscale's application to convert their Bitcoin trust into a spot Bitcoin ETF. Other apps include Kathy Wood's ARK Invest Management, BlackRock Bitwise, Wisdom Tree Fidelity, Vanek, and Invesco. The security regulator has delayed all decisions on spot Bitcoin ETFs. Eight apps have the latest possible review dates in the first quarter of next year and have three of the latest review dates in the second quarter. Now, the price of Bitcoin soared, as we know, earlier in the week on speculation that BlackRock, the world's largest asset manager, is close to launching its Bitcoin ETF. Moreover, the U.S. Court of Appeals for the D.C. District Court ordered the SEC earlier this week to reconsider Grayscale's investment spot Bitcoin ETF application. That's right. Now, uh, some analysts, including those at J.P. Morgan, are expecting the SEC to approve multiple spot Bitcoin ETFs all at the same time. And on Wednesday, Gensler talked about crypto regulation at the 2023 Securities Enforcement Forum. Quoting Gensler here, there is nothing about the crypto asset securities markets that suggests investors and issuers are less deserving of the pro uh, protections under the security laws. And I've previously said, without prejudging any one asset, the vast majority of crypto assets likely meet the investment contract test, making them subject to security laws. Further, it follows that most crypto intermediaries transact acting in these crypto asset securities are subject to security laws as well. Then Gensler previously stated that all crypto tokens, excluding Bitcoin, notice that Bitcoin is the only one with the green light, are securities. His litigation heavy approach to regulating the crypto industry has drawn much criticism, as we all know. Would you like to see Gary Gensler get fired? Let me know, fam, in the comments right down below. Now let's break down our next story of the day. Now that I've shared those ETF updates, we're going to be discussing the latest from the Giga Chat himself. Michael Saylor and his $10 million Bitcoin price prediction. I transcribed the interview he did on the Lex Friedman podcast. And here's with, uh, here's what Michael Saylor had to share. If we look at Bitcoin and model it as digital gold, you know, the market cap goes between 10 and 20 trillion. But remember, gold is defective property. Gold is dead money. You have a billion dollars of gold that sits in a vault for a decade. It is very hard to mortgage the gold. It's also very hard to rent the gold. You can't loan the gold. No one's going to create a business with your gold. So gold, it doesn't generate much of a yield. So for that reason, most people wouldn't store a billion dollars for a decade in gold. They would buy a billion dollars of commercial real estate property. And the reason why is because I can rent it, I can generate a yield on that, and it's in excess of the maintenance costs. So if you consider digital property, that's a 100 to $200 trillion adjustable market. So I think it goes from 10 trillion to 100 trillion as people start to think of it as digital property. What does that mean in terms of price per coin? Well, at 500,000, that's a $10 trillion asset. And at $5 million per Bitcoin, that's a $100 trillion asset. So you think it crosses a million, he was asked, and it could even go higher. He says, yeah, I think it keeps going up forever. I mean, there is no reason we couldn't go to $10 million a coin because digital property isn't the highest form, right? Gold was that low frequency money. Property is mid-frequency money. But when I start to program it faster, it starts to look like digital energy. And then it doesn't just replace property. Then you start to replace bonds. It's a hundred trillion dollars in bonds. There is 50 to a hundred trillion in other currency derivatives. And all of these are conventional use cases, right? I think that there is 350 trillion to 500 trillion dollars worth of currency derivatives in the world. And when I say that, I mean things that are valued based upon fiat, cash flows, any commercial real estate, any bond, any sovereign debt, any currency itself, any derivatives to those things. They're all derivatives and they are all defective. And they're all defective because of this persistent 7 to 14% lapse in which we call inflation. So there you have it. Coming from the one and only Giga Chad, Michael Saylor. What are your thoughts surrounding his $10 million Bitcoin price prediction? Let me know your honest thoughts in the comments right down below. And I look forward to seeing you on tomorrow's show. Peace.